Good morning to you on this Tuesday, the 20th of October 2020. Lovely that you have joined us this morning for morning prayer and a very warm welcome to you wherever you are. My name is Reverend Jo Richards and I'm Rector of the Benefice of St Dunstan, St Mildred's and St Peter's here in Canterbury. Wherever you are, welcome. So let us join together. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion, who satisfies you with good things, so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's, the Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom shall have dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night is past, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Our appointed psalm today is Psalm 106, and the refrain is, The Lord remembered his covenant. Alleluia. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious, for his faithfulness endures forever. Who can express the mighty acts of the Lord? or show forth all his praise. Blessed are those who observe what is right and always do what is just. Remember me, O Lord, in the favour you bear for your people. Visit me in the day of your salvation, that I may see the prosperity of your chosen and rejoice in the gladness of your people and exult with your inheritance. We have, skinned like our for we have sinned like our forebears. We have done wrong and dealt wickedly. In Egypt they did not consider your wonders, nor remember the abundance of your faithful love. They rebelled against the Most High at the Red Sea. But he saved them for his name's sake, that he might make his power to be known. He rebuked the Red Sea, and it was dried up. So he led them through the deep as through the wilderness. He saved them for, from the adversary's hand, and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. As for those that troubled them, the waters overwhelmed them. There was no one of them left. Then they believed his words and sang aloud his praise. But soon they forgot his deeds and would not wait for his counsel. A craving seized them in the wilderness and they put God to the test in the desert. He gave them their desire but sent a wasting sickness among them. They grew jealous of Moses in the camp and of Aaron, the Holy One of the Lord. So the earth opened and swallowed up Dathan and covered the company of Abram. A fire was kindled in their company. The flame burnt up the wicked. They made a calf at Herob and worshipped the molten image. Thus they exchanged their glory for the image of an ox that feeds on hay. They forgot God their saviour, who had done such great things in Egypt, wonderful deeds in the land of Ham and fearful things at the Red Sea. So he would have destroyed them, had not Moses his chosen stood before him in the breach, to turn away his wrath from consuming them. Then they scorned the promised land and would not believe his word, but murmured in their tents and would not heed the voice of the Lord. So he lifted his hand against them and swore to overthrow them in the wilderness, to disperse their descendants among the nations and to scatter them throughout the lands. They joined themselves to the Baal of Por and ate sacrifices offered to the dead. 
They provoked him to anger with their evil deeds, and a plague broke out among them. Then Phineas stood up and interceded, and so the plague was stayed. This was counted to him for righteousness throughout all generations forever. They angered him also at the waters of Meribah, so that Moses, Moses suffered for their sake. For they so embittered his spirit that he spoke rash words with his lips. They did not destroy the peoples as the Lord had commanded them. They mingled with the nations and learned to follow their ways. So they worshipped their idols, which became to them a snare. Their own sons and daughters, they sacrificed to evil spirits. They shed innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters, which they offered to the idols of Canaan, and the land was defiled with blood. Thus were they polluted by their actions, and in their wanton deeds went whoring after other gods. Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people, and he abhorred his inheritance. He gave them over to the hand of the nations, and those who hated them ruled over them. So their enemies oppressed them and put them in subjunction under their hand. Many a time did he deliver them, but they rebelled through their own devices and were brought down through their wickedness. Nevertheless, he saw their adversity. When he heard their lamentation, he remembered his covenant with them and relented according to the greatness of his faithful love. He made them also to be pitied by all who had taken them captive. Save us, O Lord, our God, and gather us from among the nations, that we may give thanks to your holy people and glory in your praise. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting and to everlasting, and let all the people say, Amen. Alleluia. The Lord remembered his covenant. Holy God, when our memories blot out your kindness and we ignore your patient love, Remember us, remake us, and give to us poor sinners the rich inheritance of Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is taken from 2 Kings, and it's 2 Kings chapter 18, verses 1 to 12. In the third year of King Hoshea, son of Elah of Israel, Hezekiah, son of King Ahaz of Judah, began to reign. He was 25 years old when he began to reign. He reigned for 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abi, daughter of Zechariah. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord, just as his ancestor David had done. He removed the high places, broke down the pillars and cut down the sacred pole. He broke in pieces the bronze serpent that Moses had made, for until those days the people of Israel had made offerings to it. It was called Nehushtan. He trusted in the Lord, the God of Israel, so that there was no one like him among all the kings of Judah after him or among those who were before him, for he held fast to the Lord. He did not depart from following him, but kept the commandments that the Lord commanded Moses. The Lord was with him. Wherever he went, he prospered. He rebelled against the king of Azariah and would not serve him. He attacked the Philistines as far as Gaza and its territory, from watchtower to fortified city. In the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the seventh year of King Hoshea, son of Eli of Israel. King Shalomensa of Azariah came up against Samaria, besieged it, and at the end of three years took it. In the sixth year of Hezekiah, which was the ninth year of King Hoshea of Israel, Samaria was taken. The king of Azariah carried the Israelites away to Azariah, settled them in Halah, on the Habor, the river of Gosan, and in the cities of the Mendes. Because they did not obey the voice of the Lord their God, but transgressed his covenant, all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded, they neither listened nor obeyed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now for our canticle. Spirit of God, teach us your ways, that we may walk in the paths of peace. 
Come, let us go to the mountain of God, to the house of the God of Jacob, that God may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For the law shall go out from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. God shall judge between the nations and shall mediate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O people of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Spirit of God, teach us your ways that we may walk in the paths of peace. Our second reading this morning is taken from Philippians. It's chapter 1, verses 12 to the end. I want you to know, beloved, that what has happened to me has actually helped to spread the gospel so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to everyone else that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers and sisters, having been made confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, dare to speak the word with greater boldness and without fear. Some proclaim Christ from envy and rivalry, but others from goodwill. These proclaim Christ out of love, knowing that I have been put here for the defence of the gospel. The others proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, but intending to increase my suffering in my imprisonment. What does it matter? Just this, that Christ is proclaimed in either way, whether out of false motives or true, and in that I rejoice. Yes, I will continue to rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will result in my deliverance. It is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be put to shame in any way, but that by my speaking with all boldness, Christ will be exalted now as always in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labour for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. For this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege, not only believing in Christ, but of suffering from him for him as well, since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Lead me in the paths of your commandments, that I may see the wonders of your law. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. And now for the Benedictus. In your tender compassion, O God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, 
and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. In your tender compassion, O God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, as we come together this morning, we pray for the day that lies ahead. We pray for any tasks that we have to hand, the meetings that we may be having either in person or on Zoom, conversations that we might be having, all those impromptu, unexpected conversations, bumping into somebody in the street maybe, all that unexpected phone call or even a letter, remaining ever mindful of those who continue to feel lonely and anxious at this time. Heavenly Father, we lift this day to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we reflect upon our reading from Philippians and Paul's imprisonment for his faith, we remain ever mindful of all those that are in prison for their faith, persecuted for their faith. In wherever they may be, Lord, we pray for them, that they may not lose their faith, but hang on to it. Wherever they may be, that they know your comfort and strength and that you are with them. We pray for those also who may feel persecuted by the subtleties of something somebody may say to them, or perhaps feel if they wanted to wear a cross and felt difficult to do so. Anything like that, Lord, we really lift them to you that they too may feel your strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we continue to pray for all those refugees, migrants, all who might be fleeing from torture, persecution. We pray particularly for those charities and those folks on the ground who help, who see Christ in the other and are Christ to the other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for wisdom for all in authority at this time, O oh Lord. For those who are making decisions and policies around this virus, the impact it's having at so many levels on so many people. For those who are making decisions today, we, Lord, we pray for that wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for all those who are struggling in body, mind or spirit. For those who are unwell at this time. For those who are struggling with their physical health. For those who may be struggling with their mental health. For those known to us who specifically asked for prayers for today. We lift them to you, O Lord. A moment of quiet, we name them on our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for our church, for Justin, our Archbishop, for Rose, our Bishop, for Joe, our Archdeacon, and for all those lay and ordained who minister across our benefice, our deanery, diocese and beyond. We lift them all to you, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we continue to remember those who've died in faith, for those who've gone before us to join that communion of saints. We live to you, O Lord, those specifically known to us, 
may have died recently, whose anniversary of death falls at this time, and for those who are preparing for funerals. Heavenly Father, accept our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now for our collect. O oh God, for as much as without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and all those that you love and pray for, for this day and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. It's lovely that you're able to do so for morning prayer. Um, please do join us for night prayer at six o'clock this evening. Otherwise, my colleague John Morrison will be leading a morning prayer tomorrow at nine. Wherever you are today, please do keep well, keep praying, keep connected, and whatever you do, have a good day. God bless. Bye-bye for now. Bye. Bye.